Hello house lovers, welcome to Bonacord House and yes, once again it is a yellow letter day and why? Oh, it's a long story. Let's go inside and I'll tell you all. Yes, house lovers, council in its infinite wisdom has decided because there are significant changes to our plan, it has to be re-notified for 14 days, which is only 14 days, which is great because last time it was 30. <sighs> But the good thing is, by the end of the month, the first week of November, we should have our builder's permit. But enough of trauma and enough of stress and anxiety. House lovers, it is time to talk timber stripping. Yes, house lovers, now do you remember these doors that used to be, well, originally in this corner, but then they had been moved to that corner? I had a good Aussie go at stripping these because I wasn't sure, looking at the back, I'm not sure if you can see, but can you see there, depends how the light catches, there we go. Can you see that fielded pattern on the back of the door? So what I had hoped was that those doors were in fact Australian cedar and that we could strip them and then ultimately wax them and use them somewhere else because it will have a, a beautiful rich mahogany colour. But no, because here, House Lovers, is the footage of Maddie with his heat gun stripping them. Well, stripping one, actually. And as you can see, there was a lot of layers of gunk on it, otherwise known as a century and a bit's worth of paint. The original finish was quite clearly scumbled oak. Now, if you remember, scumbling is when you use a cheaper base timber, such as pine, and you paint it with a decorative finish to look like a more expensive material particularly uh, mahogany or oak or sometimes marble as well. Ergo, what we have discovered is that this, which was the original dining room cupboard in Bonacord House, was scumbled to look like oak and uh, would have been quite a light colour. Well, that was all well and good. In the privacy of my own home, I was able to strip those doors. But what about the timber here in situ at Bonacord House? What am I going to do? Because as you may, or may not know the electricity is disconnected because we don't need any and if you just look at that that is perhaps the safest indication of what the power system used to be like in this house but death trap is the word that springs to mind so the power is switched off which of course leads us to quite a serious logistical problem ergo how do you power electrical tools with no power well obviously you can use battery operated tools and i have for the drill but there are some things, house lovers, that require a lot of energy. And I'm here to tell you, heat guns are one such tool. House lovers, so the obvious solution to the problem is a portable generator, is it not? So I went to our local hardware emporium and I had a look and I saw the price of them. I thought, gee, I'm only going to need it really for a week or so just to be stripping the timber. It seemed a lot of money. Then I had a look at secondhand ones. Again, a reasonable amount of money um, for something that I'm not going to use that often. Then, of course, I did what one always should do and ask a parent. I happened to mention to the good doctor's father, John, I need a generator and they're really expensive. He said, don't worry, Matthew, I've got one in the garage. Here it is, brand new. He'd never used it. So we borrowed the good doctor's dad's generator. Thanks, John. And then I said, you haven't got a heat gun as well. Ta-da! Here we go then. It is called Family Heat Gunning, which sounds like an 80s quiz show. Today then, what I'm going to start doing is cranking up this baby outside with the extension cords that I have to start stripping the partition. The partition in the hall, I don't know if you remember this, Stripping timber is it's a journey, like life. And I began this journey with very simple uh, generic paint stripper from the hardware store, just to get a sense of, of what the timber might be and how that might work. Now, oh, there are paint strippers, there are paint strippers, there's paint, there's paint, there's layers, and all manner of complexities to the equation. One of the problems with this is, of course, it's nearly 150 years worth of paint, which is many, many layers. Modern paint on the top is probably going to be acrylic, and the paint underneath is going to be lead, more than likely, so there's toxicity. First thing, then, house lovers, one needs is a very good mask and ventilation, both doors open, and I've got a fan, too, which I'm going to plug into my generator. 
blow those fumes out of here, baby. But I digress. I also then had a go with the paint stripper that I've used on the wall, which is the thick paste that you then apply a paper to and you peel off. Um, and as you can see, it got a little bit of paint off, but not a huge amount. I was a bit surprised actually, because I thought that might be the go here, but no. And then as you saw earlier, I used the heat gun on the doors, which probably has a similar amount of paint layers as this, and it came off a dream. So that is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna heat gun these. And what do you need for that, house lovers? Well, a heat gun helps. <laughs> there are two settings, hot and less hot. It does get very hot as well, so do be careful. You then need scrapers. A flat scraper for general scraping. And then this tool, which has got all of these various edges, like this, and it's got a curved section and a rebated section and a straight edge. So you can get into just about any type of molding, whether it's curved, concave, convex, or a fine groove. Now you might find that you've only got a few layers of paint and that generic paint stripper from the hardware store does work really well and really quickly. Great. You might also figure out that if you've got a few more layers of paint, then the slightly thicker paste application with the paper might work as well. Or you might find, like me, that there is so much paint to be taken off that you've really got to get the big guns, or in this case, a heat gun. As I mentioned before as well, you've also got to be aware of the timber. Now this, I know, is pine, because we did a little bit of a scrape and you can see it on the corner. And as you might remember, pine is generally used in Victorian interiors, particularly because it was always meant to be painted. And there was a trend in the 1980s to strip pine architectural timber and wax it, which is great, but not what we're gonna do. Ultimately then, all I'm doing is stripping this back to its base layer so we can then gently sand it. And it just brings back all the crispness of the wood and all the crispness of the molding silhouettes so we can ultimately repaint it. However, if you've got things like architraves around doors or around windows or any timber detailing in the house that might be able to come off easily, it could be an idea to get all that removed and then get it tanked in a caustic soda tank where the whole piece of wood is immersed and it's soaked and then all the, the paint is scrubbed off, it's then neutralized and then it's ready to be sanded and reapplied back in the house. House lovers then, it depends on the timber, the sort of finish you want and the type of architectural fittings that you've got. So I'm gonna try and crank up that generator baby and get us some heat gun fan action going on. There we are, house lovers. We're getting that baby to fire up. It was a bit of sweaty work. Anyway, the light is fading. A storm is coming, so I will say farewell before the light goes. Next week, I'll report back on my luck with the partition stripping. In the meantime, house lovers, take care. Have a good week wherever you might be. I hope things are well and safe. Thank you for liking. Thank you for subscribing. And I will see you next week with further heat gun and stripping adventures.